Miss Fine, every producer on Broadway is preparing a scene for a benefit next week. I'm doing Our Town, and I need a supervisor for the costumes. Ma Maxwell, what are you saying? I'm saying I want to hire Miss Fine. But regardless of what that magazine says, I happen to know you have a keen sense of style, Miss Fine. So, will you take the job? Are you kidding? Oh, Mr. Sheffield! I can't believe you trust me like that. Maxwell, Nanny Fine does not want you to hire her out of guilt. Guilt has been very good to my people. <laughs> She's radiant. And I think she'll do a wonderful job. Maxwell, I think you're thinking with your little producer. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Oh, you're attracted to this woman for God knows what reason. <laughs> and it's clouding your professional judgment. Cece, that's ridiculous. Besides, it's just one scene in a benefit. Maxwell, the entire Broadway community will be there and we'll have costumes by... Oscar de la Yenta. <laughs> if you insist on doing this, then you'll do the benefit alone, because I'm out of here. <laughs> Hasta la vista, baby. Cece. <laughs> Cece, you're overreacting. You'll, you'll see. Miss Fine will do a splendid job. Oh, our town, this is going to be fabulous. I'm going to do a whole Four Times Temptations thing, you know, with backup singers and sparkly gowns. Oh, wait a minute, that's Motown. <laughs> oh, don't worry, I'll get it, I'll get it. <laughs> oh, Maxwell, I'm so sorry. This might be a bad time to ask you this, what with your career in the toilet and all. <laughs> But now are you ready to admit that it wasn't your brain that hired Nanny Fine? Look, I'll admit it was a mistake hiring her, but I won't question my motivation. The history is full of relationships between men and women that have nothing to do with sexual attraction. Like, uh... Mm-hmm. Uh... Mm-hmm. Uh... Us. Mm. <laughs> Mr. Sheffield, it was fabulous. The clothes were a knockout. The only complaint was the hair was too big, but don't worry. That was just from a woman that was sitting behind me. You should hear what the man behind me said. Are you Dolph Lundgren? <laughs> Look who's here. It's Todd Oldham. Oh, I just love his designs. We sat together at the Women's Wear Daily Luncheon. Oh. Oh, oh, he's coming over to say hello. Todd! Franny. Oh, <laughs> cousin Toddy. Uh, you mean Todd Oldham is your cousin Toddy? Well, of course. How do you think a nanny could afford to dress the way I do? <laughs> so who wore this before me? Was it Cindy Crawford, Heather Locklear? Um, well, actually, it was Wesley Snipes. <laughs> Wesley, huh? <laughs> Uh, Todd, I'd like you to meet my boss, Maxwell Hi, Sheffield. It's a pleasure. How do you do? And his Hi. partner, Cece Babcock. Remember me? No. Mr. <laughs> Sheffield, according to Andrew Lloyd Webber, your scene stole the show. Really? Webber knows my name? <laughs> I mean, Webber knows my name is synonymous with avant-garde. Did he say that guy, or did he specifically call me Maxwell Sheffield? Uh, Todd. In the cemetery, everything was blue. So evocative, so poignant. Why blue? Well, I like blue. <laughs> and Mr. Mr. Sheffield, how does it feel to reinvent a classic? Well, actually, a great deal of the credit goes to a very special woman I work with. Just a moment. Thank you, Maxwell. <laughs> C period, C period, Babcock. CC! Well, anyway, you did a wonderful job. Oh, thank you. You know, I've got style, I've got flair. That's how I became the nanny. <laughs> oh, there's the photographer from Gloss Magazine. He's gonna take a picture of her. Excuse me, Miss Babcock. Right here. 